You need to develop a link with the Quran so that the Quran takes you into Jannah. You need to learn to read the Quran and its meaning so that it takes you into Jannah because it is the word of the owner of Jannah. That's the reason. It is the word of the owner of Jannah. And I've given the young people an example that you know what, if someone you really love sends you a message, no matter how long it is, you want to read it. Why? Because you really love them. Really love them. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He sent you the whole Quran. You don't just read it in the month of Ramadan. Start now. Start today. Pick up the Quran and read one verse every day. Is it too much? Is it too much? One verse, not more than one verse. One verse every day. Today, you read Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Tomorrow, you can read Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. No problem. The next day, you can read Maliki Yawmiddin. This is the minimum, minimum. You must be thinking that's too little, isn't it? You must be thinking I can read the whole of Surah Al-Fatiha. Read it with its meaning one verse a day at least, minimum. Put a marker. Wallahi, there will come a day when that Quran will bear witness for you because the hadith says, Innama al-a'malu bin niyyat wa innama likulli mri'im ma nawa. All actions are judged by their underlying intentions. And every person shall be rewarded according to their intention. So if your intention was to complete the Quran and you were reading one verse a day and you die after having read perhaps one chapter out of 114 chapters, you will still be rewarded as though you read the entire Quran because of the consistency, the dedication and the intention. You follow? There are people in greater need than you are. You help them fulfill their need and Allah will help you fulfill yours. When you give a poor person a dollar, you might be helping him build his dunya. But trust me, his dua will help you build your akhirah. Let me translate that into English. When you give a poor person a dollar, you might be helping him in terms of this worldly life. But his prayer for you will help you build your hereafter. That's what it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our wealth. A person who doesn't give before Ramadan, what do they expect to do in the month of Ramadan? So let us start giving from now. Learn to be generous in order to lead by example, even a little bit every day, to start your day with a good deed, to read a dua or two. How many of us sit to eat together as a family? How many of us? Very few. And we say, no, Singapore, you know, it's the, for life is very difficult, it's fast, we need to go to work early. No, you make the time to have at least one meal together. Start off with Bismillah, aloud. How simple it is. That's the minimum dua, minimum. Dua is to say Bismillah. If you want, you can say it in English. Oh Allah, I thank you for the meal you've given me. I thank you for the food that you've blessed us with and the drink that you've granted us. Say it so your children know that every time my father or my mother eats or drinks, they thank Allah. So let me do the same. And they relate it to Allah. Oh Allah, it's you who has blessed us, blessed us with this. Let us understand. It is the month of fasting, the month of discipline, the month of taqwa, the month of the Quran, the month of developing a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the month of repentance, the month of making resolutions so that we can lead the rest of the 11 months of the year leading up to the next Ramadan in a way that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, try it out. See the benefit you have. You fast, you arrive at a new level of spirituality. Believe me, trust me, it is just like Salatul Tahajjud. The Hajjud is the pre-Fajr prayer, which we always say, if you have not engaged in it, try it out at least a few times in your life. Come on, try it out. I'm sure we can be strong enough to do that. We can try it. So get up once a month and say, you know what, let me try the Hajjud. Do it, see what happens to you. I promise you, something will change in you permanently. You know that? Try it for the sake of Allah. Get up, put your clock only for Allah. And let's be honest, a lot of us look at Salah, as a responsibility being a burden rather than a responsibility being a gift that we should be honored to engage in. Like I always say, and I've said it from this seat as well in the past, my brothers and sisters, there is a difference between a person who fulfills salah because he has to do it and another who fulfills it because he wants to fulfill it. Very big difference. You know, there comes a time when someone says, why are you, why are you reading your salah? And the person will say, because I have to, it's a duty. That's correct. The answer is not wrong. 
But there comes a time when a person wants to read that salah. They're looking forward. They know it's a duty, but they don't stop at that. They really want to. In that case, they will start working on the quality of the salah rather than the quantity. Because if you're doing it because you have to, you come in and you just down and up and down and up and you finish your salah and you're out. You say, Alhamdulillah. And you know, we are done. Allahumma anta salam. And you walk out and everything is gone. But if you read it because you want to, you come in and you take your time, you stand correctly, you have made wudu properly, and Allahu Akbar, when you start your prayer, you are plugged in with Allah, nothing distracts you and you can lengthen it. The longer you prolong, the more you enjoy it. Is that what happens to us? May Allah make us that. Pray for them. Go and visit the elderly, visit the sickly. You should be getting a feeling of goodness when you visit an old person. Subhanallah. You will find lots of wisdom. They have seen the world. They have seen so much. You will find lots of goodness. It is one of the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go and visit the sickly. Go and visit your relatives. Solve problems and matters. Resolve matters. A winner is he who resolves problems. You have a family matter, a feud between the family. Try your best to solve it. Try and try hard. It's not going to be easy. But you will be known in the eyes of Allah as a person who tried his best to maintain family ties. وصلها. A person who is a maintainer of good family ties is not he who has a tit for tat relationship. You know what that means? They give me something, I give them something. They give me something, I give them something. Part of it. Subhanallah, it's wind that catches everyone, which means the generosity reaches everyone. I'm generous to you with my smile. I'm generous to you with my time. I'm generous to you with whatever Allah has blessed me with by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we will engage in istighfar. We will, we will try and welcome this beautiful month by turning to Allah and by developing our character and conduct, by improving the relationship we have in our homes and houses. A lot of us have a lot of room for Islam. No room for procrastination in Islam. Do not leave today's work for tomorrow just because you feel you will be able to do it tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow's work, if you can do it today, a productive Muslim will bring it in and do it now. So that tomorrow something else might come up and you can achieve. This is why we say, let's start benefiting for the month of Ramadan from now. For improvement with our relations with our own children. In our relations with our wives and our husbands perhaps we have so much that needs to be done but sometimes we are we couldn't be bothered we are too busy doing some other things before you know it life will be over you know nowadays time is flying that's just muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has prophesized this zaman. one of the prophecies of towards the end of the time time will begin to fly it will be crumpled crumpled meaning a month will pass as though it was just a day Honestly, make resolutions that are current and here and now we've spoken about quite a few of quite a few of them. Let's hope that we can pledge right here, right now that we will engage in at least one of the matters that we've discussed today as positive resolutions in order to enhance ourselves as good Muslimin to become better people so that when the month of Ramadan comes, we will already be on a beautiful level and we will excel and improve and we will know how to even welcome the months after Ramadan that are so beneficial and so beautiful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and may He bless the entire globe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all until we meet again sometime in this beautiful city or elsewhere.